Afternoon folks, Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. Once we get a wooden project done of some sort, like a spoon or a net needle or something to that effect, we want to seal that project so that it doesn't further dry out. Also so that it doesn't take on moisture and swell up or split or crack. So we need to seal it somehow, just like we would a bow that we had just finished, to keep it from drying out any further. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Stay with me and we'll get started. You know, I have a couple of project pieces in here in my haversack. One of them is the net needle and gauge that I made yesterday. One of them is a spoon that was carved actually by Miss Iris. And they're all three made out of dead dry wood. So what I want to do is I want to seal these. Now, if I were in a wilderness situation, I could seal them with any kind of animal fat, tallow, suet, anything like that, depending on what animal it came from. I could use those things to seal this with. Preferably, I want to heat it up a little bit to let that oil or grease or whatever I'm using, that animal fat, soak in real well. But on a hot summer day like it is today where it's in the 90s, you're not going to have to worry too much about that because most of the things you're going to use to seal it with will be fairly pliable. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use a product off our website called Fix and Wax. And Fix and Wax, I've had a lot of questions about in a lot of other videos. So this is a good time to talk about Fix and Wax. And Fix and Wax is a cake. And it's exactly that. It's made with wax, but it also has, it's very soft. It also has several other proprietary ingredients. It was invented by my senior, one of my senior instructors, Jeremy Janey, and he's not giving up the secret. I don't even know exactly what's in it. We just buy it from him and sell it on our website. But it looks like it comes out of a muffin cup. It's wrapped in paper, so you can always use that paper for fire tinder if you need to. But it's a very soft, totally edible, totally environmentally safe product. I've actually used it for so many things I can't even tell you the uses for this fix and wax. Anything that you need sealed like this, it works great for. You can use it on leather. You can use it to protect metal. Yesterday when I was making my net needle, I scuffed my knuckle on a branch or on, on a stump and cut my knuckle open. It was bleeding pretty good. And I just took this fix and wax and smeared it right over the top of it and rubbed it into the hole where I knocked that chunk of skin out. And today it's not even sore. So it's very good medicinally as well. You could use it for a lip balm if you needed to. Like I said, it's totally edible. I've actually used a chunk of this in one of our classes as bait in a crawfish trap and actually caught crawfish in that trap. So it's a very, very multifunctional thing. You could also melt this down into a tin and use it as a base for any type of a herbal salve. If you wanted to mix some type of dried herb with this to make a herbal salve, you could do that as well. But I'm just going to take this and I'm going to rub it real good onto the object that I want to seal and just smear it on there real real good and then I'm going to take something else and rub it in real well in this case I'm just going to use a piece of brain tan and I'm going to rub it in there real good and then my brain tan is getting waxed at the same time so that's not hurting that any and I use that for a lot of things as well so I'm kind of killing two birds at one stone and I'll put a couple of coats on there until the thing feels greasy. And I might have to put a second coat on it later. Or I may put a second coat on it right now. Just to ensure I've got plenty of it rubbed in. Get it in all the creases and cracks and things like that. And then I'll be in pretty good shape and I'll have that pretty well sealed. And it's not going to deteriorate any further from drying out or cracking. And it shouldn't swell up from getting wet or anything like that and start cracking either. So the fix and wax works really, really good for any type of sealant for a wood object. So we'll get the spoon done, and then we'll get to the uh, mesh gauge. You know, one of the things that I want you guys to think about when you are learning skills, whether it be bushcraft, survival, self-reliance, reenacting, whatever the case may be, pioneer type skills, is that there's, you know, one of my sayings is there's a lot of ways to skin the possum. But everybody wants to eat it. And it's the same thing with survival and self-reliance and bushcraft. A lot of people have different ways of doing things. And it doesn't mean that because they're not doing it the same as somebody else, it's wrong. It just means it's different. As long as it gets the same end result, it can't be wrong. It may be a little bit more caloric expenditure or a little bit more dehydrative activity to do it in a certain way. It doesn't make it wrong. And you know, a couple of the mainstays that I have always gone by or philosophies that I've always tried to live by in my business is A, let's learn together because you can learn something from everyone and B, pass on the tribal knowledge. That's what it's all about. And as long as we're passing on the correct knowledge, 
Tribal knowledge is something that is very important, and everybody has a contribution. No matter who they are, no matter what age they are, no matter what channel they have, you know, they have a contribution. So when I go to someone's YouTube channel and watch a video, and I do that once in a while, especially people that are friends or my instructors and things like that, if I'm going to leave a comment, it's going to be a positive one. I'm going to try to encourage that person to keep on passing on the tribal knowledge. I'm going to encourage that person to keep making videos. Because if they're making videos, at least, if nothing else, they're getting dirt time. And that's what's important, because you can't learn this stuff from a video. You can only learn it from dirt time. And by watching other people's videos and by making videos, it encourages you to go out and do dirt time. And I think that's really important. So one of the things that I try to encourage with my school, with my channel, and with other people is that we should all work together and learn together. Everybody's got valuable input. Everybody's channel is there because they're trying to either teach or learn or both. In my case, I teach and learn at the same time all the time. If I don't learn something new every day, I don't feel like I've done something right. So I just wanted to kind of throw that out there to you guys while I was finishing up this project, getting this stuff all greased up with the fix and wax and sealed really well, that, you know, I encourage you to go look at other people's channels and look at the way they do things and watch other people's stuff, but just, you know, be nice. There's no sense in being mean. The world's full of enough mean people as it is. We don't have to be mean. We can be encouraging. If you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. That's my policy. And that's what I try to teach my kids, my grandkids, and everybody in my life. If you've got nothing nice to say to somebody, just don't say anything at all. Because better that than to be mean. So anyway, sorry about the rant. I think we've got most of this stuff good and waxed up and sealed. It feels a little bit tacky, and that's okay. Now I'm going to take my piece of brain tan here and just wipe my hands on it real quick. And then I'm going to wipe the implements down. Then I'll put my fixing wax away. And like I said, you know, that fixing wax is good for so many things. It's a valuable carry. It can be a fuel if it has to be. And it, is, it does have wax in it, so it is, you know, flammable. Once you have open flame, it will create a fuel. It can melt down and become a fuel if you've got a wick for it. So it's a very good item to carry that doesn't cost very much money. Like I said, I have no idea exactly what's in it, other than I know it has some type of wax and some type of vitamin E. But it has several other ingredients that... You know, my guy Jeremy's not willing to give up because he's done a lot of research and development to get it right. So I can't say I blame him for that. Okay. We're looking pretty good here. Now these implements should last for a very long time. And if I need to put a second coat on them down the road, I can do that. For now, I'm just going to roll them up in this piece of brain tan to keep them safe and neat and tidy. And then I'll look at them tomorrow and see if they need a second coat. Meanwhile, I'll leave them out in the sun in a warm area so all of that stuff can soak right into that, into the green of that wood. Like I said, this stuff comes wrapped in paper, which just gives you an extra fire starting option. It also is tied together when you get it with jute twine. I don't know what I did with my jute twine, but it's tied together with jute twine over the top. So again, you've got something else to add to your bird nest or add to your fire. So it's a very good little thing to pack and carry. And I keep mine, you know, in my kit, in my buffalo bag that I keep either in my morse pot, my bush pot, or in one of my other pots that I'm carrying, or I just shove it in my haversack. Okay, guys, well, I'm Dave Cabra at the Pathfinder School, and I appreciate you joining me for this quick video on how to seal your wooden tools that you're making around camp when you're doing your bushcrafting activities. I appreciate everything you do for me, for my school, for my family, for my friends, affiliates, and sponsors. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.